Iron, the essential trace mineral needed by our bodies. Hello, welcome to Sue Tasty. Today we talk about the essential trace mineral, iron. In this talk, we talk about iron and the following eight aspects. They are, what does iron do in our bodies? Iron in the diet, where iron is mainly found? The food sources of iron? Iron absorption factors. Iron in the gastrointestinal tract and absorption. The absorption of non-heme iron. Iron in the body. How much iron do we need? Iron recycling in the body and iron excretion. What does iron do in our bodies? Iron is a significant blood constituent essential for hemoglobin in red blood cells. The main job of mineral iron is to carry oxygen in the hemoglobin of red blood cells in our bloodstream. About two-thirds of our body's iron is in hemoglobin. Hemoglobin takes oxygen to body cells. In body cells, oxygen is used to produce energy. The red color in the blood is due to the iron-containing protein hemoglobin, and a deficiency of iron decreases hemoglobin production. Hemoglobin is an iron-containing protein in red blood cells that bind oxygen from the lungs and transport oxygen through the bloodstream to body cells. Iron is used to make myoglobin, a protein that provides oxygen to muscles. Iron is used to make some hormones and connective tissue. Iron supports a healthy immune system. Iron helps in brain development. Iron helps change beta-carotene to vitamin A. Iron helps produce collagen. Collagen is a fibrous scleroprotein in bone, cartilage, tendon, and other connective tissue. Collagen is the main structural protein in the extracellular matrix found in the body's various connective tissues. Iron helps make body proteins. Part 2 We talk about iron in the diet, where iron is mainly found. The food sources of iron. There are primarily four dietary food sources of iron, they are, heme iron from animal-based meat, non-heme iron from plant-based foods such as leafy green vegetables and whole grains bread, leached iron from cast iron utensils when cooking foods inside them, lastly, many foods on today's supermarket shelves are enriched or fortified with iron, for example, iron-enriched flour and iron-fortified breakfast cereals. Iron in the diet comes from both plant and animal sources. The iron from plant-based foods is non-heme. Much of the iron in animal products is heme iron. Heme iron is found in two animal proteins, hemoglobin in blood and myoglobin in muscle. Meat, poultry, and fish are good sources of heme iron. Heme iron accounts for about 5% to 10% of the dietary iron in Western countries. First, heme iron food sources. Heme iron is a chemical complex containing iron. A heme complex includes four five-membered nitrogen containing rings that form a cage around a central iron ion. The iron is heme iron in hemoglobin and myoglobin, and the iron ion is in the ferrous state. Heme iron is a complex red organic pigment containing iron and other atoms to which oxygen binds. The deep red color of animal muscle comes from hemoglobin. The darker the color, the higher the heme iron content. For example, beef liver, redder than roast beef, has more iron. Dark turkey meat has more heme iron than light turkey meat. Second, the non-heme iron from our diet. Some plant-based foods give the dieting iron in the form of non-heme iron. For example, leafy green vegetables, legumes, whole grains and enriched wheat products are good sources of non-heme iron. Third, the leached non-heme iron from cast iron utensils when cooking inside them. Cast iron utensils are a source of non-heme iron when dishes are cooked, especially simmered in them for a while. The iron in the cast iron utensils can be leached from the surface of the utensils into the cooked foods. When dishes are cooked in the presence of acids, such as tomato juice, citrus juice, and vinegar, more iron can be dissolved into the cooking liquid as acids can enhance ion leaching from the surface of the utensils into the cooked foods. Fourth, iron-enriched foods sold in supermarkets. Nowadays, many foods on today's supermarket shelves are enriched or fortified with iron, for example, iron-enriched flour and iron-fortified breakfast cereals. Next, let's talk about the iron absorption factors. The iron in the food consumed isn't absorbed into the bloodstream very efficiently. Four parameters affect the absorption of iron. The quantity of iron in foods gets absorbed depends on the following factors. 1. The iron form, whether the iron is heme iron or non-heme iron. 2. The amount of iron the person consumes overall. 3. Whether there are other nutrients in our meal and snack that enhance or hinder the absorption of iron. The presence of heme iron enhances the absorption of non-heme iron. Conversely, non-heme iron cannot affect the absorption of heme iron. 4. The quantity of iron the body has already stored in the human body. There are two types of iron in dietary foods, heme iron and non-heme iron. Heme iron is the iron form contained in meat, poultry, and fish. Heme iron is the heme group in hemoglobin and myoglobin proteins in animal meats. Non-heme iron is the iron in plant origin foods. Interestingly, egg yolks have mostly non-heme iron. 
Heme iron is absorbed more readily than non-heme iron is. Depending on how much iron the body has stored, 15% to 35% of heme iron from food gets absorbed. Even though foods with non-heme iron often contain more iron, only 2% to 20% of non-heme iron gets absorbed. The bioavailability of iron in a mixed diet, animal and plant-based foods, is about 18%. Iron from the diet is absorbed into the intestinal mucosal cells. Then the iron is transported from the mucosal cells to the rest of the body, depending on needs. Now let's talk about iron in the gastrointestinal tract and absorption. Our bodies are highly adaptive, absorbing more iron when its iron stores are low and less when they are higher. Iron from the diet is absorbed into the intestinal mucosal cells. The amount of iron transported from the mucosal cells to the rest of the body depends on need. If body stores of iron are high, less iron is transported from the mucosal cells to the tissues. If iron stores are low, a more significant percentage of the iron that has been absorbed into the mucosal cells is transported to other tissues. The amount of iron in the body is controlled primarily by how much iron is absorbed. Iron from the diet is absorbed into the intestinal mucosal cells. The amount of iron transported from the mucosal cells to the rest of the body depends on needs. If body stores of iron are high, less iron is transported from the mucosal cells. If iron stores are low, a more significant percentage of the iron that has been absorbed into the mucosal cells is transported to other tissues. There are primarily three proteins regulate the transport and delivery of iron, the copper-containing protein ceruloplasmin, the iron transport protein transferrin, and the iron storage protein ferritin. Ceruloplasmin converts ferrous iron to ferric iron, which can bind to transferrin and ferritin. The iron that has entered the mucosal cells of the small intestine can be bound to ferritin or picked up and transported in the blood to the liver, bones, and other body tissues by transferrin. Transferrin receptors on cell membranes bind to the transferrin iron complex allowing it to enter the cell where the iron is released for use. When iron is in short supply, less of the iron storage protein ferritin is made. The number of transferrin receptors on cell membranes increases, allowing more iron to be transported into the cells. When iron is plentiful, more ferritin is made to increase storage capacity. However, the number of transferrin receptors on cell membranes decreases, so the ability to pick up iron from the mucosal cells and transport it into body cells is reduced. The iron that is not picked up from mucosal cells is excreted in the feces along with mucosal cells when they die and are sloughed off into the intestinal lumen. The iron absorbed over immediate needs can be stored in the protein ferritin, primarily in the liver, spleen, and bone marrow. Levels of ferritin in the blood can be used to estimate iron stores. When ferritin concentrations in the liver become high, some is converted to an insoluble storage protein called hemosiderin. However, the bound iron can be mobilized from body stores as needed. Now let's discuss the absorption of non-heme iron from plant-based foods. When food containing non-heme iron is consumed, stomach acid helps convert the ferric form of iron to the ferrous format of iron. The ferrous form of iron remains more soluble when it enters the intestine and is absorbed into the mucosal cells more readily. Two types of substances can enhance or inhibit the absorption of non-heme iron, referred to as iron absorption enhancers and inhibitors. First, let's talk about the non-heme iron absorption enhancers. The non-heme iron absorption enhancers give enhancement of iron absorption through foods partnership. Pairing certain foods enhance non-heme iron absorption in eggs and plant-based foods. Vitamin C and animal meat are enhancers to the absorption of non-heme iron. Consuming vitamin C or iron from meat, poultry, and fish simultaneously with plant-based non-heme iron-rich foods helps overcome the aforementioned inhibitors. The first enhancer is acidic substances, such as vitamin C, citric acid, or lactic acid. When foods containing non-heme iron are consumed with these acids, iron absorption is enhanced because the acid helps to keep iron in the ferrous form. The studies show that vitamin C enhances non-heme iron absorption by keeping iron in its more absorbable ferrous form and forming a complex with iron, the developed iron complex remains soluble and more bioavailable. As a result, vitamin C can enhance non-heme iron absorption up to sixfold. For example, vitamin C-rich strawberries with oatmeal, papaya with whole wheat toast, red bell pepper with whole grain pasta, orange juice with whole wheat bread. The second enhancer is the meat containing heme iron. Meat such as poultry, beef, fish can increase the absorption of non-heme iron. For example, besides being a source of iron of its own, a small amount of ground beef in a pot of chili bean soup enhances the body's absorption of non-heme iron from the beans. For example, barbecued beef's iron absorption enhancer pairs with a non-heme iron source of roasted beans and tortillas. Chicken with brown rice. Sirloin strips with a spinach salad. Next, 
The non-heme iron absorption inhibitors. The non-heme iron absorption inhibitor is the substance that inhibits the absorption of non-heme iron by the human body. Fiber, phytates, tannins in tea, and oxalates in some leafy greens, such as spinach, are the dietary factors that inhibit the absorption of non-heme iron. Some phytonutrients, 1. Oxalic acid in spinach and chocolate. 2. Phytic acid in some nuts, legumes and whole grains. Humans cannot digest phytic acid. Phytic acid inhibits iron absorption. 3. Polyphenols in coffee. 4. Tannins in coffee and tea inhibit non-heme iron absorption. These polynutrients in plant-based foods are large molecules that bind readily with non-heme iron and inhibit its absorption. The tip for better non-heme iron absorption is to drink coffee or tea between meals, not with meals. Now, let us discuss the three main functions of iron in the body in further detail. The three primary functions of mineral iron in the body are the following. 1. Iron in the body is essential for oxygen delivery to body cells. Iron is a component of two oxygen-carrying proteins in the body, hemoglobin and myoglobin. Most of the iron in the body is part of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin in red blood cells transports oxygen to body cells and carries carbon dioxide away from cells for elimination by the lungs. Myoglobin is in the muscle. Iron in myoglobin enhances the amount of oxygen available for muscle contraction. 2. Iron is also a part of several proteins involved in the electron transport chain in the body, drug metabolism, and the immune system. 3. Iron is also part of the enzyme catalase. The enzyme catalase protects the cells from oxidative damage. Catalase is an enzyme that destroys hydrogen peroxide into oxygen and water before the peroxide can damage the cells. Oxygen is essential for life, but oxygen can also be poisonous. Excessive oxygen in the body can induce the formation of free radicals peroxides and other reactive oxygen species, superoxide, hydroxyl radical, singlet oxygen, and alpha oxygen. These reactive oxygen species are highly reactive chemicals and can damage cells through oxidation. For example, peroxides are free radicals, which can damage cells through the oxidation of the cell components. Many trace elements interact with oxygen, some by assuring oxygen is delivered to cells and some by preventing oxidative damage. But unfortunately, minerals can also catalyze the formation of dangerous free radicals. To prevent the formation of free radicals, the body stores, transports, and uses these minerals in the forms of the protein complex, therefore, these minerals cannot cause the formation of free radicals. For example, iron is transported in the body by binding the protein transferrin, and iron is stored in mucosal cells by forming a ferritin protein iron complex. Ferritin is a universal intracellular protein that stores iron and releases it in a controlled fashion. Ferritin is the primary intracellular iron storage protein keeping iron in a soluble and non-toxic form. In addition, ferritin acts as a buffer against iron deficiency and iron overload. Transferins bind iron tightly but reversibly, mediating the iron transportation through blood plasma. Transferins are produced in the liver and contain binding sites for two ferric ions. Several enzymes that contain trace minerals can destroy reactive oxygen molecules and protect cells from oxidative damage. Iron, copper, zinc, manganese, and selenium all serve as components of antioxidant enzymes. Iron is an essential trace mineral needed by our bodies. How much iron do we need? Now let us discuss the amount of recommended iron intake needed by our bodies daily. The recommended dietary allowance, RDA, of iron is based on the amount needed to maintain normal function but is only referred to as a minimal iron store in the human body. For males aged 14 to 18, the RDA is 11 mg daily. The RDA is set at 8 mg per day for adult men aged 19 and older and postmenopausal women. For females aged 9 through 18, the RDA is 15 mg daily. The RDA for menstruating women aged from 19 to 50 years old is increased to 18 mg per day to compensate for the iron lost in menstruation. When menopause, iron intake needs to drop. Menopause is the time to stop taking an iron supplement. Iron-rich foods can supply as much as most postmenopausal women need. Iron needs are highest during periods of rapid growth, childhood, adolescence, childbearing years for women, and pregnancy. Before menopause, women need enough iron to replace losses. During pregnancy at any age, the RDA increases to 27 mg daily. During breastfeeding, the RDA is 9 to 10 mg daily. The lower RDA for iron than for non-pregnant women during breastfeeding assumes that menstruation has not resumed. Before menopause, women need enough iron to replace losses from the menstrual flow. Iron needs also go up to support increases in blood volume during pregnancy. Not surprisingly, 
Iron deficiency anemia is most common among people at these ages and stages of life when the dietary need for iron is highest. If you don't consume enough iron. When insufficient iron stores in the body get too low, red blood cells cannot carry as much oxygen, which likely makes the individual feel tired and weak, causing an inability to concentrate and poor memory, also lowering the ability to fight infection. An iron deficiency can also lead to anemia, although other causes may be. Symptoms of anemia include fatigue, weakness, and poor health, interfering with a person's ability to perform to full potential. All the consequences above interfere with a person's physical ability to perform at their full potential. Iron deficiency is more common among menstruating women. Vegans are advised to consume more iron because the body does not absorb non-heme iron from plant-based foods as well as the body absorbs heme iron from animal-based foods. What if you consume excess amounts of iron? Healthy adults have little risk of iron overload from iron in foods. However, there is a possibility of an intake of excessive amounts from iron supplements or medications, leading to abdominal pain, constipation, faintness, vomiting, nausea, gastric upset. Taking adult iron supplements can be dangerous for children. Children should get immediate medical attention if they take an overdose of iron supplements. For ages 1 through 13, the tolerable upper intake level, UL, of the highest daily iron intake level is 40 mg daily. For people 14 and older, the UL of iron is 45 mg daily. Last, let us talk about the recycling and excretion of iron in our bodies. Iron in the body is not readily excreted. The lifespan of red blood cells is about 4 months. Even when red blood cells die, the iron in the hemoglobin of the dead blood cells is not lost from the body. The cells are removed from the blood by the spleen and liver and degraded. The iron is then attached to transferrin for transport back to the bone to be incorporated into new red blood cells. This recycling action helps protect us from iron deficiency. Even in healthy individuals, most iron loss occurs through blood loss, including that loss during menstruation and the small iron lost amount from the gastrointestinal tract. Some iron is also lost by shedding cells from the skin and urinary tract. Sue Tasty made this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.